Two years ago, I remember talking to a teenage boy about Aung San Su Yuki at a camp for displaced Rohingya families in Rakhine State, Myanmar. In reality it functioned more like an internment camp. He couldn't leave without special permission, and without citizenship, which the government has denied the Rohingya since 1982, he had no right to go to the country's schools, universities, or access its health care. Like so many Rohingya in Myanmar, David and his family were marooned, stateless in their own country. Conditions in the camp were miserable, but he was optimistic about the future, and he wanted to become a teacher. He believed everything was about to change, because Aung San Su Yuki was about to win the election. Image many in Myanmar have immense faith in the Nobel Peace Prize laureate if Aung San Su Yuki gets the vote, we will get freedom here, he told me confidently. I trust Aung San Su Yuki, Aung San Su Yuki will help us. His words have always stuck with me. I put them to Aung San Su Yuki the following week in Yangon, asking her whether she would assure this boy that she would help him, and take the opportunity to condemn what some were already calling genocide in the northwest of her country. Video Full Special Report Rohingya Refugee Crises It is not a question of trying to exaggerate small problems into big ones, and big ones to the extent where they are totally unmanageable, she replied, declining to use the term Rohingya. I'm not saying that this is a small problem, I would promise everybody who is living in this country proper protection, in accordance with law, and in accordance with the norms of human rights. Two years on, the Rohingya haven't got freedom. Instead, life has got much worse. The UN now describes their treatment as textbook ethnic cleansing. And yet still, Aung San Su Yuki, Nobel Peace Prize laureate and human rights icon, has said precious little about it. Video starvation and death on the beaches instead her government, and state media, have blamed terrorists and fake news for spreading misinformation, and accused Rohingya of burning their own houses down. The argument advanced in Ms. Su Yuki's defense is that the country is still at a delicate stage in its transition to democracy, after half a decade of military junta rule. The military retains a quarter of seats in parliament, and its officers head the powerful defense and interior ministries. Having come so far, it would be a shame if Aung San Su Yuki's courage and her words were to desert her now. Katie Stollard were the lady, as she is known to many in Myanmar, to take too strong a stand, so this theory goes, she would be overthrown, and the generals would resume control. She is appalled by what she has seen. She does care deeply about this, one of her advisors told the Guardian newspaper last month. I know that does not always come across, but she really does. He said she was focused on fixing the problem, rather than identifying it. Video when's genocide not genocide but publicly identifying the problem would make a difference. It would show the desperate families documented by Sky News, risking dangerous sea crossings to escape to already overcrowded refugee camps in Bangladesh, that she does care, and that the hope they invested in her election was not misplaced. Aung San Su Yuki has proven herself to be a woman of extraordinary courage and eloquence, who has chosen to serve her country. At tremendous personal cost. When her British husband was dying from cancer in the UK, she refused the general's offer to leave the country and travel to his bedside, for fear that she would never be allowed to return. It was this level of bravery, this remarkable individual determination and self-sacrifice that caused so many around the world, and within her own country, including that hopeful boy, to believe in Aung San Su Yuki, and what we all thought she stood for. Image Aung San Su Yuki seen with MYO ethnic people in northern Mongda, Rakhine state having come so far, it would be a shame if her courage and her words were to desert her now. Surely, this cannot be the price of the freedom and democracy she fought for. As the head of the Global Center for the Responsibility to Protect told the UN recently, democracy cannot be built on the bones of the Rohingya. It is absolutely true that Ms. Su Yuki does not have power over the military, but she does have the power to speak out the same power she exercised from behind those high walls during her own imprisonment. Please use your liberty to promote ours, she asked others at the time. Aung San Su Yuki now has her liberty. The test of her legacy will be what she chooses to do with it. Sky Views is a series of comment pieces by Sky News editors and correspondents, published every morning. Previously on Skyviews, Faisal Islam's scrutiny is not treachery.